show you the marigolds that are starting to come in. They are really pretty. And the pitifulness that is my roses. I have one strong branch going up there. But yeah, I had trellis these, had them tied up all pretty, and then the Japanese beetles happened. I'm in the front flower bed. There's the sage that has gotten massive and crazy. And one of the little lavenders, the little bulb will be hanging out. But yeah, this is my yellow knockout rose. And I mean, look at that devastation. This thing was absolutely beautiful. And then the Japanese beetles happened. So, but I wanted to show you how much this stuff has grown. Remember those little bitty stevia plants? Stevia, 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 way out there. And one right there, that little rosemary back there has survived. The other one died, so I need to get another one to put out. But the English lavenders that are back there, right here, have survived. I swear, there's all, like, I don't see a whole lot of the honeybees up here. But those things, oh, around the country, guys. But, uh, that right there is what we see mostly here. Man, you see how much the stevia has grown. And I've been really harvesting some things off of it. Now, the little violets, I cannot keep them in this flower area. They grow here. This is basil. This is cinnamon basil right there. So, it is just now starting to grow right there. But yeah, my poor roses, they are downright pitiful and just awful, and I hate it. Um, I need to just go ahead and deadhead it and cut some of it back, but it's been, it's been pretty um, bad as far as the heat and everything. So I thought, eh, I'll leave it alone for right now, but I'm going to, you know what? Sure, we'll walk this way. The hubby's been working in the garage and it's messy out here because he's building new shelves and up. Obviously, it's getting windy because it's raining out this direction. Um, and uh, so it's one of those that, I don't know if it'll start raining here soon, but it very well may. Um, it's been a very on and off, and I wanted to show you some of the damages of some of the things that's been going on in the last week because it's to the point where I'm having to pull some of the squash and things because the powdery mildew is just awful. Um, it, it's just not doing well at all. Um, and one of my favorite things right now is like elderflower fizzy soda. Like it's good. Um, mixes very well with drinks, but it is really good by, by itself. The hair, hold on. <laughs> Set that down. Um, but yeah, let me just show you what's been going on because it's not been good. I also wanted to show you the vine borer damage to the acorn squash that was out here. So, hold on just a second. I'll show you all this mess that I was clearing out earlier today because I'm trying to save some of the squash. See all that? This is what's happening to the fruit. Like, it's just molding because there's so much wet. Um and i mean i've been cutting a bunch of the heavy leaves out a lot of the larger leaves i mean they are completely covered but we've got some new growth down in there so i'm hoping you see the newer brighter greener leaves hoping that those will take off this one that's still right there that's another acorn squash i'm hoping to leave it alone it's like the only one well, i think it's an acorn squash i may be wrong but i know for a fact that this one is because it's got an acorn squash still attached and I'm trying to get it to survive. But you see this damage here? There are vine borers in this. Now, ways that you can treat that, um, that damage right there, and then, you know, some of the split damage over here, you can. Luckily, you know, these are big enough to where this is still surviving, still putting on new growth, even with that vine borer damage. Um, it's still got a couple of fruits. Oh, goodness, it's not wanting to focus down in there, is it? There it goes. Um, it's still got new fruits and things down in there, which is why I'm trying to save a lot of those. You see how much I cut a bunch of those back. I'm really trying to save them. But it's 
the vine borers get down in there and then basically they eat the inside of the plant their larvae eat the inside of the plants and then their beetles eat the leaves of the plant and it just doesn't the plant doesn't survive usually look at that that corn i can't wait this is the blue hope turquoise corn i cannot wait to try it and see the colors on that um you can actually see the nasturtium now that i cleared out some of that and obviously the wind is picking up but look at these they're starting to hang down from up here and oh the flowers are all closed up those were beautiful earlier today a beautiful purple i actually took some of these um i'm leaving these bigger ones for seed but i took some you know about this this size right here and harvested them they oh uh, look at that lightning bug um oh even less friendly friend right there hanging out yeah you're not my friend you're what got me one of got brass the other day but these things were amazing um they are going to be my new faves they are this thing's not going to focus tonight um i roasted some i sauteed some i ate some raw every way that i tried these i loved them i'm gonna try to pickle them and can them and see about the consistency on the canning but right now those purple things that are super prolific because look they're starting to hang down from up there are my new faves as far as flavor and tasty cooking now obviously we're starting to get into the cucumbers like really getting a bunch i mean you can see a bunch done in there and right there um and the melons are finally like really taking off you see all the blooms that are on it but we're also getting some female blooms which are not wanting to focus because of the wind we're starting to get those female blooms and i've been looking down in here to see if i see any little melons starting but oh that's a spaghetti squash that's not a melon see there's another little little one right there but I don't see any tigger melons. These are gonna be like orange striped, little orange striped melons. I'm not seeing any yet, but that's okay. This one might turn into one. The bloom just died off. But I do wanna show you this, if I can get a good angle on it. I don't know that I can, um, but you see that in there? That eggplant, I keep showing just like one or two of them. There's actually like, five eggplants on that eggplant there's these two and then there's like three on the other side there's just a lot going on there and look at these monsters i trimmed some of this out you see how it's like bare stems down through there for some of these and again i'm trying to get it to focus um i'm trying to give it some air i have trimmed a couple of the tops because the wind is getting so bad that they're trying to blow over and it is driving me crazy because i'm afraid they're going to knock the plants over and the plants are not going to be able to have time to grow and get their fruit to um where it needs to be but look at that thing caught a worm trying to eat it and got it out but bees i'm not having problems with hornworm i am having problems with those i don't even I've never had a problem with these things eating, it's not on the focus, eating my tomatoes. I don't even know what kind of caterpillars these are, but I have been tearing them off. I mean, they're not getting like massive amount of damages, but I don't want, don't want caterpillars eating my stuff, man. I finally got a couple of the solar flares. These are ones I grew from seed. These are very pretty. I'll post a picture of one of them on the Instagram because they've got some really pretty colors. Now, this is the Sunrise Bumblebee. These, they may look ripe. They're not yet. See that little bit of color that's coming in on the bottom? Those will go all the way up the sides. Um, you'll see the little stripes. And so these, we are starting to get a handful at a time of the ground cherries. I've got like a bowl of them sitting on the counter. And so um, those, it won't be too much longer. I'll be looking for things to do with those as far as like maybe making a jelly or a, co a compote or something. Oh, I don't know if you can see them in there. So if you can see me, I think you can see them. Yeah, look at all those eggplants on that side. Like they are massive. I'm really shocked. But here's some more. These are the ones I kept calling daddy's tomatoes. These are the saved seeds. And they will turn like a red yellow stop when they're ripe but these are a little bit bigger than i expected them to be but that's okay they're across so there's no like definite pattern to them but they're obviously tomatoes so i can't wait to be getting some of those 
I've got a few of the black beauties that I got to harvest because they were cracking. Um, these are so pretty and those also are ones I have grown from seed. Um, super thrilled with those. And more of the Aunt Molly's ground cherries. Now, speaking of plants that are damaged, um, the spaghetti squash is definitely like on its last leg. I'm trying, because of blasted little boogers like that. <laughs> um, they're driving me crazy. I probably can cut that one. You see how it's turning yellow under the green skin? This one, if you look at the vine, this is vine border damage that you can trace it all the way back to the bottom. So this one I can probably cut and take. This one I was trying to give a little bit longer along with this one. But the plants just aren't surviving. Um, it had tried. This one is the greenest part. It did put on a new fruit. This is the newest fruit. But I don't know that it's going to get a chance to get much bigger. I'm trying to watch these plants. Because if you notice, the leaves and things are dying on this. And um, it, tracing it back down again, we're looking at vine borer damage. And there are ways to treat that. Now, this is too far gone, obviously. Um, oh, my goodness. I'm in love with the arches being the way that they are. But, obviously, there are ways to treat the vine borers. Um, you can take BT because, I mean, the larvae are ultimately what is killing the vine. Um, and you can take, a, like, a syringe and inject BT into the vine to kill out like when you but you got to be like very vigilant and you got to notice the holes immediately and you know spray that stuff down in it spray it on it and hope that you get it where it needs to be so that it'll kill those larvae and not kill your plant um, a lot of times by the time you're seeing the holes or the evidence like that where they're you know there the plants already doomed um, and so some people will be kind of proactive about it and we'll spray a bunch of BT on it initially, but that doesn't always work either because a lot of times it's the beetles laying the eggs inside the tubes and inside the vines and the vines, you know, you can't spray it inside the vine unless you're injecting it. So it's kind of up in the air. I was just trying to really stay on top of it, but things were getting really bushy and just really hard to stay on. I mean, I was out here every day taking eggs and things off these plants and yet the powdery mildew is what got the yellow squash over there the spaceship squash and this is a combination of things um combination of the vine borers and the the powdery mildew because we obviously have a powder mildew problem oh i just noticed that new fruit right there um i don't know if that one's gonna have time to do its thing i about walked into that spider web i don't know if you can see it right there but these rattlesnake beans i've been picking i'm gonna have to um can some more but I am loving that they are up over my head. Like I'm literally holding this flat to the sky and the beans are hanging down from up there. We, obviously these are the new rounds of the pole beans. Uh, they're all the way up there and trying to escape. And that's fun. But we're still getting some from this. And you see the wasps and the blasted Japanese beetle damage. You see this, I mean, they're just everywhere. But I mean, we're getting new little beans in with the old beans and so I'm leaving them alone letting them do their thing blasted Japanese beetles making more Japanese beetles <sighs> um, they're the bane of everyone's existence right now but I'm gonna leave them basically I was telling my mother-in-law this morning when she was here I was like these are now just kind of a sacrificial plant let them have this plant um, while the new beans are growing they're not really bothering the rattlesnake ones that much which I'm thrilled with but you know let them have this i've already gotten product or produce off of this let them eat that and then not eat the other things but yeah they are they're awful yeah the zinnias i am in love with these zinnias i cannot wait for the other ones i planted in the other flower bed to bloom um i got tendrils reaching out but yeah we're starting to get okra um there's a couple i've clipped a couple down in there so that is a positive thing that i will be getting okra i've been clipping a lot of basil and doing the basil oil discs speaking of i mean I'm, i've been clipping this stuff every day and it is determined to put on flowers um that you have to stay on top of basil in this like this part of summer because they will go to bloom 
ridiculously fast. Um, one of the things I wanted to note is that this rosemary, remember how I told you that had that weird blot? And I just knew I was going to lose it this year. I was leaving it for this year to let the other one get established. Obviously, it's got some dead down inside it. It just really needs to be trimmed back. But it's healthy. And I mean, and I'm not seeing any of that black blight. So I have been taking off of this. I have been using it to make some of the herbal salts I've been doing. Um, along with the sage, obviously. But it is, you know, it's not doing terribly. So I'm going to leave it alone and see what happens. But this is catnip that self-seeds. I planted catnip in this four years ago. Every year it self-seeds back. And the bees and everything love their, the flowering off of it. And of course the cats love it too. So I will tell you, I take some into the cats periodically. I moved the chives from this because there was an anthill in this to there. And I just knew they were going to die. They're coming back. And even... You see that little bitty tiny bloom like right there trying to put blooms back on so it survived yay i'm gonna mound up some more dirt around it when i clear out some of this this winter because again this happens every year everyone like this is not unexpected this whole jungle of a disaster that's here and ultimately that's why i put the strawberries in this because i wanted the strawberries to fight with all of this for the space because this happens every year and this is kind of like a pollinator herb garden kind of thing the english quote unquote part of my garden that i don't typically change i don't trim it i don't like do anything to it i just let it be as natural as possible so that things like this can go on you know things like the little bumbly bees that are roaming around and all the tiny pollinators like I don't know if you're able to see them but they're usually just tons and tons which I'm not of course I'm not seeing them right now but usually there are just tons and tons of these little bitty tiny pollinators that are all over these and um and just everywhere and the honeybees really like it though oh my goodness guys let me tell you about the bees so got my bees on the fourth moved them in on the fifth i actually um started like had brass down there in the suit and was filming some of it um obviously he's fully suited i'm fully suited and he was super excited he's gonna be my little helper with the bees but there was like a freak accident because they were getting you know kind of ornery when i was starting to move the frames and so i told him the area that it's in, it's got cross ties and mulch underneath it and around it so that we don't have to mow right underneath the hives, right? Because I mean, it's kind of in an urban, suburban area. Well, he, his boot, his boot caught the, the cross tie and he went flat on his back in his suit and the bee, like the netting laid down on his face and the bee got him a couple of times in the face. He was good. He listened to me. He didn't panic. He got up, he walked away. I rushed through moving the frames into the hive and, you know, checked on him. And I mean, and he was fine. He's not allergic to bees. He, I mean, he, he cried, but I mean, after two or three minutes, he was perfectly okay. Well, obviously, 10 days later, when we needed to go back and check the hive, make sure everybody's doing what they need to be doing, he was a little hesitant, but he did go down there with me. We tried smoking them this time, but of course, of course, the smoker went out and would not stay lit. And so he helped a little bit, but he was a little apprehensive, understandably. And so I ended up checking them. I did a hive inspection a couple of days ago and they've not really been expanding like I would expect them to. And they just seemed hyper aggressive and just, I mean, I had my suit on, so I mean, there were no stings this time or anything like that. And I checked all the frames that they were on. I didn't see the queen, but I, but I did see larva in various stages. Did not see any newly laid eggs. Um, which may, may just be because we've just shifted them, you know, it, it had been 10 days. So, um, I'm going to check them again in another week to two weeks. I'm feeding them up because I did notice that it looked like they had been feeding off of their stores rather than storing up stuff, even though we've got a lot of things still blooming here. Um, and I'd fed them a couple of jars of sugar water when the very first few days I had them moved in, but I feel like they were just kind of struggling. So I ordered a larger feeder because they were going through a jar of the stuff a day. I've been giving them a jar a day and um, I think they would end up drinking more to be honest. 
But I went down there this morning just to change out the jars. I mean, and they will go after you. And none of my neighbor's bees have been that way. And I mean, just not even like taking the jar away, like just popping it out, setting it aside and popping a new one in. And they will be all up in your business and like follow you away from the hive. And so it's been, sorry, I'm turning around over here. It's been, um, I don't know. I'm thinking that they're this way just simply because the colony is weak right now because we just moved them. They're low man on the totem pole in comparison to the hives that are out there. I don't think that there's any thieving going on between the hives. Um, and I think another thing is because of the feeders that I'm using, I'm having to leave the lower bar, like the opening, the entrance, fully open rather than limiting it to a single small space. And so I think that that's what one of the issues or some of the issues are. I'm hoping that when I get the top feeder and I can feed them in larger quantities so I'm not having to open the hive as often and can do it that way, it will, you know, kind of calm them down a little bit, give them a little more security. Um, at least I'm hoping because I've been telling everybody, like I've been working with the hives with the neighbors since April when we got those bees and I've, I'm the only one out of the group that's not been stung. And knock on wood, I have not been stung yet, but... I, I told told my husband, I was like, it'll be my bees that get me. Like, my neighbor's bees. Now, when one of the hives, when we moved them in, they were a bit edgy. Um, and really, I don't even feel like they are as edgy as these. I feel like mine are more aggressive than theirs were to begin with. And I thought theirs were a little aggressive. Whereas Joe's, I could just walk up to his hive and poke it, you know, with nothing on and take the lid off. And they don't care. Um, they are super laid back. And the neighbor's bees, now that they swarmed and they separated, because that was the one that we had the whole debacle with about, they swarmed and split. And so now they have two hives. Um, they're super healthy, active hives. They don't really care about what you're doing. Um, I actually helped the neighbors with a hive inspection before they went on vacation after we installed mine. Um, and they were fine, like not hyper aggressive. If anything, mine were coming out to investigate more, even though we weren't messing with their hive. Like it, it's just kind of weird. And so, I'm gonna give it time. They're settling in. Um, I was <laughs> just after today. I mean, there's we stepped away from the hive like a well distance away, and one of them like hit my arm and was like coming after me still. And I'm like, dude, or lady in that case, like come on, man. So I mean, I had to brush her off. I didn't get stung, but I mean, I was a good hundred foot, not well, yeah, fifty to hundred feet from the hive. And she was still looking for me. And so I think they have, you know, figured out, I guess, who I am. And that was without a suit on. So it wasn't like they were going after the big white suit. Um, and so I don't know. Like, I just feel like they're hyper aggressive right now. And I'm hoping it's just because they're feeling weak and vulnerable because they're newly moved. They don't have the food. Part of me is kind of second guessing myself about moving them in July, about taking on a hive in July. And wondering if they'll have enough time to build up enough for winter. Obviously, I'm not getting honey from them this year. Anything that they build up is theirs to keep. But, yeah. Like, it's... That's why I've not been down there, like, doing any of the videos. There's been a couple of photos posted, but I've not been doing a whole lot. Just simply because they are seemingly more aggressive. And I need to be on my guard with them to be safe for them and for me and for anyone that's helping me. And so, I've been more focused on doing that and not filming obviously i mean this isn't super important um the important thing is staying safe and you know making sure that the bees are healthy but i mean again on the positive when i did the inspection i did see larva um obviously the bees are still in there doing doing some things but i felt like they were feeding off of their stores their stores looked really low um and so i'm feeding them up in hopes that that will help them to get established and calm down and settle into their new home. I was hoping to have the second box on there by August, but I don't know if that's going to happen because they've not been moving into the extra frames yet. So we're just going to, I'm going to feed them up for a week or two, check again, you know, kind of see where we are. On the positive, Toby bought a bee suit, and so he's going to be helping me in addition to Bryce occasionally because Bryce is understandably a bit nervous now, even though he understands that the, it was a freak accident and the only reason he got stung was because he fell. Um, because his suit was protecting him. They got him through the mesh because his mesh touched his face. Uh, so, and even still, I mean, only one of the stings 
even did anything. Like the other one, with, like the stinger was there, but it must not have penetrated the skin very deeply because it was like, like it didn't even swell. <laughs> it didn't even do anything. But um, yeah, so that's kind of what's been going on with the bees. Just to give you an update, that's why I haven't done any videos because it's been, we've been trying to let them settle down and they're a bit more aggressive than I expected them to be. So that's kind of the way things are at the time. But I'm going to cut this off. You know, check on a few more things out here. I'll probably cut out more of the the squash plants that are dying off. I was doing that when my mother-in-law came in today. And so we got to chat and then I kind of quit mid-job. So I need to step back over and start doing those things. And I may, you know, take these one or two spaghetti squash in. I've been trying to let some of them harden off so I can put them in the pantry and put them up uh, for winter. And pull these out essentially and see what I can get started as another round. And maybe there's noodle beans. I may pull some beans out of one of those and plant those suckers over here because I'm, those are my new fave things that I've planted. So um, those are gonna be a, a staple for right now because they're really tasty. I really like them. I understand why they're a hit for people. So, but it's coming up on bedtime for the boys and I'm out here and it didn't rain on me. So that's positive but we will talk to you guys later i'll post videos about the bees when i feel like it's safe to do so and i will try to keep you guys updated on the changes that are going on because it's daily right now everything's kind of shifting we'll talk to you later have a good evening